Well, we're riding the light rail again. That's always fun. This is actually the trolley, and then we'll go the trolley to the light rail, and the light rail to Gardner Village. Right. <laughs> This is uh, a lot cheaper than driving with the price of gas. Well, and I like it better because we don't have to battle traffic. And parking. Right. Now, we've shown everybody Gardner Village in the past. <laughs> we sure have. But it's just a really fun place uh, here in the Salt Lake Valley. And it's just a, a really wonderful place to go visit. Right, especially right now they're having the Fairy Fest. The Fairy Fest! But the, I guess the number one reason we come out here is because this is the location of the train shop. Right, the new location. The new location. They moved in here a while back. The big thing that brings us here today is uh, Steve is moving his new railroad that's going into the train shop today. Oh boy, that's, that's uh, nerve-wracking right there. It sure is. Because that door has kind of a funky curve to it, but we're low enough that I think we're fine. Um, I'll put this up in the front so it doesn't whack anything. But I think, just push the button up there and it'll go down. This button. Yep. Ooh. Oh, how high tech. Super. <laughs> hey, when you spend 60 thou on a car, you better get something out of it. <laughs> Plenty more, that's for a used pickup. So Jeff has planned to set this new railroad up right here in this bay window. Isn't that cool? It, one of the neat things is it means that the railroad is exposed to direct sunlight. Right, and it has a natural backdrop. <laughs> so it has a natural backdrop, but it has the actual sunlight and shadows on it. And then the windows are UV treated so that it doesn't destroy the layout. I guess I like cupolas too. One, yes. two, three, four. <laughs> But no, I, I hardly recognize, it's like, wait a minute, that says that's the building, and it's like, okay, well, it's the same size. It's the so we've been covering here on the channel, Steve dismantling his fabulous railroad. Right. And he's turned it into dioramas, and he's sold pieces to other people to use on their railroads. And in this case, he's taken his entire harbor area and turned it into an approximately four by eight circle track ON30 railroad. And isn't that neat? I love it. The harbor was always one of the neatest places on his original railroad, and this gives that whole area a chance to live on almost exactly the way it was when it was on his railroad. And I noticed that the spray paint eats into the foam. Oh, yeah. So before I spray the rest of the track, I think I've got to isolate it with something. Else. Yeah. I keep using the theory of just go ahead and spray it and well, it very only, quickly wipe it with some thinner. It only eats so far. Yeah. We've done a whole bunch of shows on Steve's railroad back when it was all together. Right. And then we've also done several shows on dismantling the railroad. Once he got the whole thing essentially finished, all put together, all the different areas built out, almost immediately he just started taking it all back apart. I know, that's hard. <laughs> After decades of building right. it here. But he had an idea that he wanted to move to uh, Arizona at the time. This is what it looked like when he first uh, finished it. And it looked like this for about a month and then he started taking it apart. Oh my. Yeah, it was kind of a sad day. He it said, was. guess what I'm doing? What? <laughs> and uh, he said, I'm moving to Arizona and I'm taking the whole thing apart. Well, then he decided not to move to Arizona and instead decided to build a whole new railroad. And then he decided, no, he doesn't want to build a new railroad. He took that railroad apart. And since then, he's just been repurposing all of this and turning it into smaller railroads and dioramas and things of that nature. One of the neatest places on the railroad was this underground mine. That was my favorite. Yeah, and, and a, a person bought this and they've added it to their railroad intact, just like oh, this. Oh, wow. So it still looks exactly like this. It just looks exactly like this on somebody else's ON30 railroad. Well, that was the coolest 
I love that mine. Oh, the detail. And he did it exactly the way an underground mine working would be done, copied all of the same type of operations and the electrical connections and uh, uh, pumping operations, the, uh, the stope. This is the stope up at this end where the mineral is actually being extracted and then brought down to the shaft. He had the mill up above and everything. It was just spectacular. The railroad had two different tracks on it back when it was all intact. It had an ON3 line, which is what we see here, and an ON30 line. How oh, neat. I love tiny cameras. I shoved one of our little GoPros inside this car. I thought that was so much fun. <laughs> it was just fun to see a passenger's eye view of the railroad as it went around. Al built this car for us. This is Al. and. Um, Back in the day, Al and Steve were both working on this railroad every single day. Kind of a couple of retirees working on a railroad together. And uh, then uh, Al passed away and Steve continued working on it. And then he got the idea that he simply wanted to move to Arizona. Right. And uh, started dismantling it. Well, it could actually, depending <laughs> on how you... Oh, you know, that's, that's, right. that's right. Or two Ferraris, because, you know. Not so much MRS, but all the, 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 um, the uh, train. The big, the big loop and stuff. Down at Keith's Hobbies. We probably started MRS shortly after that. Got it. Now this was the waterfront on the original railroad. That was really cool. He had uh, envisioned that the Denver and Rio Grande Western had actually made it all the way to the Pacific, somewhere like around Sacramento, and at the mouth of a river, there was this town. And so it was a port city right on a riverfront. And oh, good grief, how neat. The Denver and Rio Grande at the Pacific Ocean in a river. Isn't that something? But this harbor that he built here for the Rio Grande to tie up at the Pacific was just incredible. He built this ship. Oh my gosh, that is one of the neatest things on the whole railroad. No kidding. When Steve started tearing the whole thing apart, he left the port city intact. I don't think he just had the heart to really tear into it. No. <laughs> So he, he started by ripping the mountains out first, and then he took the upper line out and the mines and all of these different things. But right up to the very end, the harbor was still just sitting there as the harbor. Right. And then when Jeff said, you know, what if you turn the harbor into its own unique railroad and you can move it here to the train shop and it can just continue to live on as the harbor here in the train shop. What a wonderful idea. That was a grand idea. <laughs> a real grand idea. Yes, there you go. <laughs> anyway, I, I think it's very appealing to think that your railroad can live on in some, some form, even if you have to tear the whole thing apart. I needed, I needed the stairway, so I glued the stairway to the dock, but in order to justify the toll bridge, I had to have somewhere where the toll bridge could go to. Got it, because the Governor Lepetamine toll yeah, bridge yeah. isn't going to make any sense if there isn't a bridge. Yeah, if it didn't go anywhere. Yeah. It's nice to see that Governor Lepetamine's toll bridge has survived on some level. So it's taken Steve several months to 
to rebuild this area into an approximately four by eight layout. Uh huh. And uh, now it's ready to be moved out to the train shop. Oh, be careful, guys. <laughs> be <laughs> careful. Yeah. Well, that's definitely the plan. Yeah. But it's your time. I'm not gonna push knowing you. me. Legs were designed to be below your head, generally yeah. speaking. <laughs> well, mine end up there. <laughs> Every once in a while, they end up over your head. But yeah. Gra gravity hurts. Mm -hmm. Well, especially at our age. Gravity is a law, not a suggestion. Like I tell people. You know, when you're a kid and you fall, when you're a baby, you got a plat, you got a padded bum because of the diaper. When you get to be our age and you fall, you break stuff that you probably don't need that you don't want to break. Okay, I'm okay. You know why only little kids wear diapers? With older people, it just depends. <laughs> Not bad. Not at all times. And he's, he's designed it so that it can easily be transported and loaded into the car. In theory, once it's set up at the train shop, it's going to be on a roll around base. And so if they need to move it out to work on something or clean underneath it or something, they can just roll the whole thing out into the middle of the room. But once it's put together, it should just remain together. But in a pinch, it does come apart. Oh, good. Oh, you're, you gotta be on my step, buddy. Yeah, you gotta be over here. So let's just set it. And then I'll grab it and turn it. Yeah, that looks like there's some eggs in the You need to figure out where he wants his holes to drill, too. Oh, which I assume are for wire. Whoa! Well, the whole thing's on the go here. This, um, okay. Swivels are right. Okay. Before we get that two position, Steve, I don't know where the hole's going to be. Yeah. Well, well, come on this side, Jeff. Yeah, I'm here. So, but, yeah. I'll measure it from this edge, Jeff. 23. No, that's right. You just want to hold it. When they say cantilever, they mean you can't lever like yeah. this. Yeah, probably true. <laughs> so one of the reasons that Jeff wanted to put the layout in this bay window is because then you can see it from outside out in Gardner Village. Well, that should increase customer flow. Well, there's so many people that come to Gardner Village, and how can you walk past this and go... I don't, I don't have any interest in that. No, you got to walk inside now. You got to walk inside now, because like, what in the world what is that? What in the world? And there's actually several different layouts in here that all run on a central uh, digital control system, a DCC control system that then operates on tokens, or operates from tokens, really. And so you drop a token in the layout that you want to operate, and the throttle comes on, and you can run the train, run it forward and back, turn the lights on and off, ring the bell. It's just fun. And there's, I think, uh, three or four different layouts in here that work that way. Oh, that's fun for the kids. And then there's some arcade stuff, too. And never mind, it's also a hobby shop. So it's really fun. You know, as they start setting the buildings up, isn't this cool to see this with sunlight on it? It makes that water look so real. This has always looked neat up uh, up on the second floor in the loft, but boy, to see it with natural sunlight on it and hard and soft shadows and everything has just come to life in a way like we've never seen it before. Right. It looks so neat this way. And then seeing Gardner Village outside is really cool. Right, like I say, an, an instant backdrop. Yeah, <laughs> automatic backdrop through the glass windows. That's a very wide gauge right there. 
Um, yeah. It's about a 12-foot gauge. Holy cow. That's Steve's Marine Railway, and we did a whole show on developing the Marine Railway. Here's a link to that. <laughs> and then this bridge, the bridge was constructed just for the recreation here on the 4 by 8 and it's got this non-operating lift bridge through here, and it really adds a neat feature to the harbor. And then the lighthouse, he started the lighthouse, geez, years ago, but never really got it finished. But now he needs the lighthouse in order to fill in the foundation over here at right. the harbor. So the lighthouse got finished, and boy, didn't that turn out nice. Oh, that's so cool. If you'll notice, it has a full interior. A couple of these buildings do. Wow, they're so neat. And of course, what's the point of having a lighthouse if the light doesn't work? Right. <laughs> Well, Jeff still has to tie this into the big master DCC system and put the coin operated controls on it. Right. So it doesn't run just yet, but how fabulous to see it sitting here now in its new location. And uh, hopefully this gives an opportunity for yet another part of this amazing railroad to live on for decades and decades to come. If you haven't been over to the channel, or worse yet, if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. Right. You can like and share, but the number one thing is if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. It, it really helps us out. And the easy way to do that is with the blue button right there. Well, we're not sure how you found this video on the internet. We hope you didn't find it boring. And we will see you here on Tuesday with some Tuesday foolishness. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye.